Good morning, Fusion. Here we go. How are, how's everybody doing this morning? Good, good. <laughs> bon dia. She said something in Portuguese. That's awesome. Um, real quick, I just want to uh, say something um, right before we start this service. Um, so last night I was at an event, um, and the, the pastor, he said something which really resonated with me, and I'm sure it will resonate with everyone here. Um, many times we, you know, we, we blame the devil for what's going on in our lives, right? Many times we think that a hard struggle or, or a difficult time, it's the devil. It's what we say, you know, he's coming at me. He's coming at me. I'm a Christian. He's coming to do that. But no, you see, Jonah, God gave him a calling. His process was to go to Nineveh, right? But he ran from it. And from it, God sent a storm. That was the struggle. So many times it's not the devil that's coming at you. Many times it's God wanting you to go through that process so you can learn and pick something from it. And through that process of learning, that's when you understand that God has something for you. That's when you understand God has a plan for you. Amen? You see, many times, me, myself, I always thought, you know, here we go again. This happened one more time. And it's just time after time, the same struggle, the same battle. And I'm like, why is this happening every time, right? The thing is, you won't leave your struggle until you learn what you have to learn through that process. Amen? And so this morning, I want you to think on that. Think of the times where it was tough and you kind of said, wow, the devil's coming at me again. No, step back real quick and think, think real hard. What am I supposed to learn from this process, God? Ask him that this morning. Amen? Today's communion, keep that in mind as we praise God and we lift uh, you know, our praise to him. Real quick, let's just bow our heads and start the service. Father God, this morning I want to say we humbly come to you, open heart, open-minded, giving everything we have, putting it at the cross, simply to say, God, I am here, not because of what you can do for me, but because of the way that I feel when I talk to you, the way that I feel after I leave here. Is it a sense of peace, God, and that's what I want. And so this morning, God, I lay it all at the cross. I lay it all at your feet, my burdens and all. I forget what is my worry for the day, and I simply say, God, I praise you. God, I give you glory, the honor. And this morning, as we start, Father, I just ask, please come down. Talk to me. Allow me to feel your presence, God. Allow me to be part of you. In Jesus' name we pray.
feel him no longer And one day the stone rolled away from the door Then he arose over death he had conquered Now is a sand my Lord evermore Death could not hold him The grave could not kick him From rising again Cause leaving him loved me And dying he saved me Buried he carried My sins for
Cause you were worthy of it all You were worthy of it all For from you are all things And to you are all things you deserve the glory. Say it to him. You were worthy of it all. Yeah, Jesus, you are. You were worthy of it all. King of kings, oh, from you were all things, and to you are all things. You deserve the glory. You sing it. Oh, 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 oh,
glory, my Lord and my King. You are worthy of it all. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. You are worthy of it all. Everything, everything, oh God. For from you are all things, and to you are all things. You deserve the glory.
Amen. Father, we pray that you would build us up. As we lift you up, you will build us up. And so we worship you as the mighty God, as the maker of heaven and of earth, of all that is seen and unseen. Give us this day our daily bread. With the breaking of your word and the time where we celebrate your death and resurrection. And everybody said, amen. Justice, turn up the lights a little. Welcome to Fusion. I'm Pastor Chip Gonzalez, one of the pastors here. We're going to have a little bit of a double header in that, if you know that baseball term, you play two games in one day. We're going to have a message for the communion with Pastor Paulo and his son. We're going to going to be doing something different, so stay tuned for that. And a couple announcements. This is the Sunday with uh, every six weeks we have the kids in Sunday school, so all the teachers can be there and the kids can get used to being in church. And this is that Sunday. If you have a restless one, you can still bring them over to the nursery. The yeah, we still have the nursery, meaning if, if you have a little infant uh, under three, then you can bring them over there. Also, a couple, couple announcements. There's, um, we're going to be redesigning the pantry. The Dwelling House of Hope run by Lavenier is the largest pantry in Lowell, and we're putting out more food than ever and bringing in more food. And the prep days are Thursday, Friday, and Saturday is the day that we give the food out to the families. And it's not unusual to have 200 to 250 boxes go to the uh, community. And these are heavy boxes. And if you are available, we, we, we have volunteers and people helping, and we're going to be redesigning the pantry to move things around a little quicker in, later in June. But especially in the next few weeks, if you are off Thursday, Friday, or Saturday mornings, and you can do one of those days, we need one or two more people for each of those days. Just raise your hand here now if you have the time to do that. We've got one right here. We've got a couple young ones, like the teenagers have been helping a lot. Anyone else? So see Lavenia. We've got another one here. Please see Lavenia afterwards who's in the back. If you don't know, everybody knows who she is. Never mind. <laughs> please, please see her right after church because her back is killing her and my back is killing me from helping out last week because I'm getting too old to uh, try to keep up with my son. We're going to be reading from Psalms 147, verses 16 to 18. I also have another announcement. Uh, there's a, we're having the first fa fusion uh, family day, which will be immediately after church in two weeks, which is May 16th. And so save the date. It's a potluck. We're going to have wiffle ball. And my wife met with some leaders of the church and some families of the church of having these family days. Kids can come. Older people can come. If you're a human being, you can come. And you can bring dogs, but no cats. Sorry. Psalm 147, verses 16 to 18. The title of my message is No Quick Fix. Turn me down a little bit. He spreads the snow like wool and scatters the frost like ashes. He hurls down the, his hail like pebbles. Who can withstand his icy blast? He sends his word and melts them. He stirs up his breezes and the waters flow. The psalmist is speaking about the Lord here. I had to look it up. I didn't know. Does it snow in Israel? But apparently where the mountains are in some of the areas, it gets cold. And a couple years ago, Jerusalem had 20 inches of snow. So that particular part of the world has different climates. It tends to be milder than here. But because there's different geography with deserts and valleys and mountains and hills, there's areas that get snow. This particular verse here is speaking about the Lord himself sending the snow like wool, scattering the frost like ashes. I know I did a nature sermon last week and I've done like 10 of them, so don't worry, I won't do more than 10 in the next year either. But there's such great 
imagery here that I think the Lord is talking more than just about the weather here. And I couldn't resist teaching on this. Now, being older, I, some of you don't know, but I'm actually over 200 seasons old. It's true. I'm over 200 seasons. Something like 224, counting the time in my mother. So, being that old, when you're old, you kind of see how things go. You see what happens. You're used to things. You're used to fads and trends and things changing over time. But even I couldn't bring myself to give this message during the winter time, extolling the virtues of winter, because it can be rough here. And yet that's what I'm going to try to do now. I'm going to try to give you an understanding on why the psalmist would be praising the Lord for winter and for frost and for snow and for ice and how this would tie in with my message, no quick fix. You see, we live in a day in societies that just want the quick fix. Just do this. Very little cost, just some psychological tweak, and you'll go this much further. We have this binary thinking, this do this, then this will happen. Yes, no, that's all there is to it. We live with constant entertainment. But what does it say is the beginning of wisdom, the fear of the Lord? And we need to understand that we need humility, that things are complex, that you need nuance and, and understanding how things work. Abraham Lincoln years ago said, if you call, if you count the tail as a leg, we got some children in here, if you count the tail as a leg on a dog, how many legs does the dog have? Little ones over there? Five? You know what he answered? Four. You still have four. It doesn't matter if you call a tail a leg. The dog still has only four legs. It's very appropriate for society today. We just make up words all the time and we create these constructs for everything. But it can't change the immutable thing that a dog has four legs. You, you see, what I'm getting at is, is that we come up with this idea. If I only did this... A couple years ago, the, this TED Talk thing where people come up, you got to speak for 18 minutes or less. I'm going to try to keep my talk now because I go on and on when I start telling stories. And Paulo's got to come up and the kids are here. All right, get back to it. Well, there was one, and no picking on this one person, I'm not going to say her name, but she advised women to power pose. And this will allow them to become more successful in the corporate world. Does anyone know what a power pose is? A couple people do. Yeah, so uh, it's, some people are going like this. Get, get a couple girls up here. We get uh, Lily who, die. all right, Bailey, come up with her. Both of you, come up, okay? So these look like just ordinary tweenagers or whatever they're called now. And so what I need you guys to do, uh, Kathan, you're going to feel left out if you're not. These are two of my kids, neighbor. Okay, what you need to do to impress the church here is you need to power pose which isn't like this, it's sort of a, it's a little bit of the hands on the hip, kind of think Wonder Woman, and kind of, you know, lift up the chin a little and, and go like this a little bit. So, uh, Kathany, start us off with the power pose. Uh, you got to get the arms going, ah, that's like kind of, no, like fists, you know. Bailey, give us a little help here. Ah, there we go. Lily, can you top that? I see that look every morning. Go sit down. Power posing. See that? My kids are fantastic. You know, I have them kind of walk into school every morning. Who really thinks that's going to change their life? Who really thinks that's going to right all the wrongs in their life? And yet there's just a, a plethora, just unending 
try this, do this, walking out of a checkout line, some little book that you can buy at Barnes & Noble. And then we have this idea of that it speaks here about that the Lord sends the snow like wool. Now, why would he do that? Well, the psalmist and the ancient people knew that there was a purpose to snow besides shoveling it. One of the things the snow does, it says right here, is he sends the snow like wool. That snow actually warms the ground in winter and takes some of the curse off of the winter to the ground. Or to put it another way, the snow protects the plants and the next generation of uh, uh, plants and things that will grow up in, in the next spring. And so uh, one of the psalmists, I mean, uh, one of the hymn writers, we don't sing hymns too much here, but his name was Watts, had a line where he paraphrased this and said, his flakes of snow like wool he sends, and thus the springy corn defends. Meaning crops and things are protected by the snow and plants and bushes. And then we see here that he mentions the frost. Now the frost hardens the ground. The frost makes the ground extremely hard. But there's a mercy in the frost because if there wasn't frost, there would be so many more pests and insects. Most of you know that I got bit by a tick a few years ago and have alpha-gal syndrome, which means that I'm severely allergic to red meat, and meat was my favorite thing. I'm going to live a lot longer, but a lot more miserably now. So this tick came all the way up from Texas. Now, how exactly it made its way from Texas up here is not completely clear. The birds did it, global warming, but... Some feeling is that our winters are not quite as cold as they used to be. And the effect of that is, is that it's surviving more, further and further north. And so, and so there's a protection that happens with the frost. That's not to say that we don't acknowledge that there's so much destruction that can happen when things freeze up. The old man of the mountain in New Hampshire, when we were a kid, we used to go see him. Well, it, it's a stone formation. It was a stone formation. But because there were all crevices in the rocks, the water would get in there, it would freeze the frost, and it would literally break apart, it just, just completely split the rocks and cause them to tumble down the mountain, and there's no face left any, anymore there. And that's the power of the frost. If you look in, and you look at areas, we were talking, I was talking with Aiden about when you drive by Saints Hospital there near the park, they just worked on a beautiful sidewalk there. They obviously didn't consult Erlikar, our um, engineer, to deal with cement and heat and thaw cycles, and they put the railing posts on top of the cement retaining wall, and everywhere they drilled the post for the, for the railing, they've split the concrete. In the first year that it's there, city work at its best. Now that it's split there, the water's going to get in there, the frost is going to get in there, and this thing is going to be rubble in a few years. Frost can be destructive in the wrong places, and yet the psalmist is extolling the virtue of the frost. What is the application here in our life? What is the point of this? Well, just like the snow and the frost protect the plants, break up the ground to allow it to breathe, allow the water to get in deeper, and allow there to be a more bountiful harvest, there's a point of the winter, of the frost, of hard times in a person's life. That's what this sermon's about. This is the big idea. No quick fix. You can't just get up here and learn how to put your hips and impress people. Maybe a little it helps. You have to have the ice and the frost, the snow. Snow, ice, and frost are no fun. 
What do they symbolize? They symbolize, or what they're talking about, is that when we don't know God, we make a mess of our life. We make a mess of our life. We do it sometimes when we do know God. So it's not just for unbelievers. This is a lesson for all of us. And when that happens, we become aware. We fall under conviction. Those of us that will be sensitive to God develop, oh my goodness, look how hard my heart is. If you've ever tried to shovel the ground after the frost has gone in thick and hard, you could literally take a jackhammer and break the jackhammer before you could break the ground up. And so it is with somebody that realizes how hard their life is, how much they've made a mess of things. They've broken relationships. They've let selfishness, they've let envy, they've let jealousy, they've let the seven deadly sins destroy their lives. Their flesh, we talked about around Easter time, the struggle within. The flesh has gotten the upper hand in them. And then they hear about God, they hear about how our righteousness is like filthy rags before God until we meet him, until we're cleansed, until we have the righteousness of Jesus. But you know, if you are walking around with filthy rags on, with holes in them everywhere, and you're walking around and it's summertime, you might as well have the robes of a king on. You might as well have new threads on. It's no problem. But when you have the cold season come, when the unforgiving north wind blows on you, you realize that you have those rags on. Do you follow me? It's in the hard times that you no longer say, I got this. I don't need God. That's when you look and you say, I'm underdressed. My wife and I... <laughs> We used to buy jackets for all these kids in Lowell. I mean, we bought so many. I bet we bought 500 jackets in our life. One of the, th yeah, maybe. <laughs> One of the things we learned was that you can buy a jacket for a kid who's eight years old, but that doesn't mean they're going to wear a jacket. That doesn't mean they're not going to lose their jacket. When I was a young kid like that, I was guilty of the same things. I did not wear a hat. I had hair then. Or gloves. Or any boots. Period. I wore short sleeves through the entire winter, and I wore the least jacket that I could. I have a rotten kid like that, Justice, who does the same thing, so I can't get too mad at him for being like me. But my mother would give me mittens. Mittens. No way I'm wearing mittens to school. They're so embarrassing. So I would get on the bus and psh, there go the mittens. I come back. My mother would say, where are the mittens? I don't know. I lost them. She'd show me how to put them in my sleeve when I get to the locker of school. I'd say, okay, mom. Then she gave me these things to put on my sneakers because I wouldn't wear boots that were these little, like, uh, rubbery things that I, I don't know no way so I'd rather have soggy feet my hair would freeze up I just sit out there I was fine just because she was cold didn't mean I needed a jacket but we all reach the point where it's so cold it's so bad that you just say I can't take this anymore I can't take it and you realize that you don't have enough on you just can't take it and this is the point here of he spreads the snow like wool, he scatters the frost like ashes, then the hail. I skipped over that because we don't get a lot of hail. But who can withstand his icy blast? And then the psalmist pivots, and it says he sends his word and melts them. Amen. That's the gospel right there. That's the good news. That's when you get to the place where you're like, God, I can't take it anymore. He goes, okay, it seems like I got your attention. Now that I have your attention, let me tell you about my love. Let me tell you about my son. Let me tell you about the cross and what my son did for you. Do you want to change those garments of rags that you have on now? Yes, you do. 
Let me put on the robes of righteousness of my son. The gospel is like the south wind. It's like the seasons changing. That's the visitation. You believe in Jesus. Faith comes. The Holy Spirit fills you. He's called what? A fire inside of us. He warms us. I was thinking about this, and, and, and I, I was thinking about it kind of in a weird way, but I, I don't know. This means a lot to me, so this is kind of my second big idea. That when God comes into your life and does a work, the Holy Spirit doesn't even break a sweat. It's no problem for him. It's, it, it's I mean, if, if, you, if I pick up this piece of paper here, it, th- does it look like this is a lot of work for me? Well, no, but how do you determine that it's not a lot of work? How, how do you say, you know, what's, how do you get a sense of that? You look at my huge arms and that they're not that flexed. You look at my face that it's not that strained. One of the things you'll often do is, is just the noise, right? There's no, there's no noise here. I mean, if you, if you, got a, if you wanted to, to lift up this stage and you, you brought in wrecking balls or excavators and, you know, they're just trying to pick this thing up, it is going to be deafening loud here. I've lost some of my hearing because I didn't protect my ears being around the construction projects that I've been involved with. Protect your ears. Don't put those loud, stupid things in your ears and turn your music up. You'll be deaf as a haddock. And I don't know if haddocks are deaf, but my grandmother used to say that. So, Back to the, the, if you were trying to move this dirt, if you were trying to do something with a great deal of force, it's extremely loud, it's jarring, there's dust, everything is shaking and moving. Now let's think about what God does every day all the time. You take this earth right now. Is this earth just sitting here? No, it's spinning around. If you live near the equator, do you know how fast the earth is spinning? Does anyone know? It's it's spinning 1,000 miles an hour. That's not counting that the earth is moving around the sun much faster than that. You know how you stick your head out the window when you're a kid and it's 50, 60 miles an hour on the highway and there's all the noise, the wind? God is spinning this earth a thousand miles an hour, not to many, mention many more thousands mile an hour around the sun like this. It's like this for him. There's no noise. It doesn't feel shaky to me. It's not loud and... You follow me? It's nothing for him. It's nothing. He's so powerful. He's so great. He's so mighty. He's so strong, he doesn't make any noise when he does something. He's so precise. He's got the earth just right. You ever try to spin something? It's not quite centered. I don't know, when you, I, I used to do the, the laundry, you know, and you throw in the, I don't know, the sneakers, I don't know, the dryer. I mean, I, he's spinning the world without a noise, and when I do the dryer, the thing's just like, there's like a gorilla in there trying to get out. Things are just a little off center. When he comes in your life, when he does the work, he doesn't break a sweat. He goes right to work. I need to do this. I need to do that. Don't expect you to feel and hear him inside of you every living second. He's not a lazy, loud guy that just makes a lot of noise when the boss is there. Look how hard I'm working. Bang, bang, boom. He's working all the time. He's all powerful. He can do everything he needs to do on the inside without doing anything. You see, that's my point about the melting. Think about it. There's ice everywhere. There's snow everywhere. There's destruction everywhere. He comes out. He goes, okay, melt. 
Think of how much energy it would take to melt the earth if the sun and the seasons and he didn't do it. Notice it doesn't say the weather does this, the weather does this. Over and over the psalmist says he sends the snow. That's what um, Mateo was saying at the beginning, if you were here at the beginning of the service. Don't just say, oh, this is that or that. It says he sends the snow like the wool. He sends the frost. Then he sends his word and he melts them. It's unbelievable. If you just try to go out there and say, I need to, you know, m melt Lowell, you'd have to bring in these heaters. They'd be crazy loud. You'd be running them all over the ground everywhere. You could never keep up. You'd thaw one area out. You'd be going to the next spot. He has incredible power and force, melts everything, and he can do that to every area of your life. Every area, not power pose, not do this quick thing, not even the Christian things of name it, claim it, ba 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 ba. You want to do something meaningful? You got to go through winter, summer, spring, fall, and then over and over again. That's what you have to do. We're gonna. I don't. I don't want to go much longer because Paulo's got to come up here. I'll just end with a couple things. If you want to do anything successful, meaningful, any project, start a business, have a relationship, you're going to have to go through all the seasons. I had somebody that nobody knows here in this room that told me that they were getting married. I said, wow, that's crazy. I didn't know you were in a relationship. She said, yeah, I met him on whatever uh, you know, app or something last week. Okay, have you actually physically met him? No, 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 we, uh, you know, whatever, Skyped it or whatever. Okay, so have you seen him mad? Have you seen him with his mother? Have you seen him with children? Have you seen him if he had a drink? Have you seen him in the four seasons of life? No. Well, don't ask me to marry you. Don't ask me to marry you. Because that's not a relationship. You don't know enough about somebody till you see them tired, till you see them in the morning, till you see them with their family, till you see them with children, etc., till you see them after they work for a day. You want to start a business? You think you've got this get rich quick way to do it? There's only one way to get rich quick sell drugs. No, don't listen to that, kids. It's not possible. It's not possible. It's hard work. It's hard work. And if you don't want hard work, then don't expect to gain and make changes in your life. I could go on and on with this, and I really could, and you know that, because I could go in a rabbit hole. But I'm going to have Pastor Paulo come up, and Mateo, and, uh, and then we're going to do the communion after he gives his thing. So, Carol, you'll... you'll sing after he gives his thing, okay? Good morning, Fusion. I want to say welcome for uh, somebody else is here for the first time. You're very welcome. I uh, feel like home. Amen? Amen. And other time, uh, I am, or I'm very sure, Pastor Chip, motivator, a church, shake a hand for the people come to visit for first or second time. Amen? Uh, I, I need to open my little speech this morning. Uh, and talk about something. Oh, it's my <laughs> translator here. Good morning, church. How are we doing? <laughs> <laughs> Definitely, I, I wish to uh, preach in English. And eu, I work eu quero this, inglês, okay? mas vou but, but I need to obey my pastor Chip. Mas eu vou Give meu applause pastor. for a pastor Chip, mas please. Pode bater o pastor Chip. Because... Porque I work for a long time eu trabalho for há muito tempo para virar um pastor. 
in a time I arrived at this church three years ago. And I find that uh, that time people call Chip. Eu falei naquele tempo o povo falava de Chip. But he worked hard. Só que ele trabalhou duro. And worked like a pastor. Duro e trabalhou como pastor. And, and, and I'm very surprised. E eu me surpreendo muito. And I renunciei. And I renounced. Uh, todo o meu preparo em português. All of my um, preparation in Portuguese. Todo as minhas experiências. All my experiences na cultura brasileira in the Brazilian culture para estar do lado dele porque to be by his side because fiquei muito impressionado com tudo que está acontecendo aqui I was impressed by everything that was going on here in this church e eu sou muito grato a Deus por poder estar do lado dele so I'm grateful to God to be able to be by his side e a minha fala hoje vai ser pequena and what I want to talk about today is going to be short e eu quero introduzir a minha mensagem da seguinte forma. But I want to intro my word with a simple uh, phrase. A linguagem de Deus na Bíblia. The language of God in the Bible. É uma linguagem que todos nós podemos entender. It's a language we all can understand. É do interesse de Deus que nós entendamos a mensagem que Ele nos enviou. It's in God's interest that we understand the message He sends. E eu quero dar um exemplo. And I want to give an example. Um exemplo que eu senti inspiração na na palavra que o pastor deixou. An example which I was inspired by the word that Chip just spoke. Sobre a neve. About the snow. Eu vou mostrar um versículo em Isaías capítulo 1, versículo 18 e 19. I will show a verse in Isaiah chapter 1. Chapter 1. E versículo 18 e 19. Verse 18 and 19. Uh, quando os tradutores da Bíblia em um país na África Ocidental When the translators of the Bible in the place in Africa um, estavam traduzindo a Bíblia para um idioma de uma tribo They were translating the Bible to a tribe E tudo estava indo muito bem And everything was going great E os missionários Uh, europeus que ali estavam trabalhando and the missionaries the european missionaries that were working there eles desfrutavam o máximo de conhecer a cultura e os detalhes da língua daquele povo they did everything they could to learn the culture the language e como eles encontravam exemplos naquela cultura e naquela língua para poder traduzir a bíblia para eles and they found examples in that culture and in the language to be able to translate that bible for them mas em um dado momento chegaram a esse versículo. But at a certain point they came to this verse. E eles então tentaram explicar aos, aos, aos nativos sobre a neve. And they tried to explain to the natives about the snow. Mas eles não sabiam o que que era neve. But they didn't know what snow was. Era é um país ocidental onde a temperatura é perto dos do, é, é, 100 graus Celsius. Uh, Fahrenheit. It's a, a place where the temperature there is always warm. It's about 100 degrees Fahrenheit. Os missionários ficaram sem saber o que fazer. And so the, mini, the missionaries they didn't know what to do. E por mais que tentavam explicar o que que era neve, eles não tinham nem ideia. And as much as they tried to explain what snow was, they still had no idea. E os missionários então pensaram todo o nosso trabalho de Gênesis até aqui, o primeiro capítulo de Isaías. Foi para nada. All of our work from Genesis to the first book of Isaiah was for nothing. E como é natural, alguns quem sabe quiseram desistir de tudo. And like it's natural, a lot of people try to give up. Isso acontece com a gente. This happens with us. Mas aí alguém disse, vamos orar. But someone said, no, let's pray. É importante você orar. It's important for you to pray. É necessário que você ore. It's necessary that you pray. Amém? Amen. E começaram a orar. But they started to pray. E um belo dia, and on a certain day, um deles estava caminhando na vila, one of them was walking in the village, e alguém estava vendendo coco, and someone was selling coconuts, e ele comprou, and he bought a coconut, e chegou em casa e abriu o coco, and he got home, he opened the coconut, e ele viu o branco, and he saw the white, e aí o Espírito Santo disse para ele, and the Spirit of ele, God said to him, que ainda que os teus pecados sejam vermelhos, that even though that your sins may be red. Deus vai transformá-los branco como a pepa do coco. God will transform them white like the coconut, the white of the coconut. Aleluia, dá um aplauso para Deus. Let's clap to God. Aleluia. Porque 
Because Deus está interessado que você conheça Ele. God's interested that you e em meet todas him. as culturas Ele encontrou uma forma in de all, falar a linguagem do povo. In all the cultures He found a way to speak the language of the people. E a minha mensagem que eu tenho nesta manhã. And so my message this morning that I have. Ela é um resumo do que eu venho ensinando cada cada uh, cada dois sábados por mês sobre o livro de Efésios. It's me resuming what I've been teaching on uh, the book of Ephesians. Quero deixar um resumo do capítulo 2. I want to leave a, a, a resume of chapter 2. Uh, no capítulo 2, Paulo começa a, a relembrar o, o povo de, de Efésios, de Éfeso. On chapter 2, uh, Paul starts to remember the people of um, Ephesians. Tudo que ele tinha ensinado nos seus dois anos e meios como missionário naquela naquela cidade. Everything that he taught them in the two years and a half in that city. Eu quero relembrar um pouquinho como era aquela cidade. So I want you guys to remember a little bit of how that city was. Efésios era uma principal cidade na Ásia Menor do Império Grego. Uh, Ephesians was a small uh, city or place uh, in the Empire of Greek. Greek. Yep. que estava debaixo do Império Romano. That was under the uh, Imperial of Rome, Romans. Dois discípulos de Jesus foram para essa cidade. Two disciples of Jesus went to this city. Esses dois discípulos geraram 12 discípulos. These two disciples generated 12 disciples. É tempo de que se você é discípulo comece a gerar discípulos. So it's também. time that if you are a disciple, generate more disciples. Quando Paulo chega em Efésios, tinham 12 discípulos. So when Paul arrived in Ephesians, there were 12 disciples. Eu preguei sobre isso aqui há dois meses atrás, está no YouTube, você pode encontrar lá. I preached lá. about this two months ago, it's on YouTube, you can Quando look Paulo that up. Quando Paulo começa a ministrar para essa igreja But em Efésios. But when Paul starts to minister to this church in Ephesians. Ele começa a partir de uma pergunta. He starts with one question. Foi isso que eu preguei há dois meses atrás. And that, that's what I asked, uh, ele disse preached com, about two months ele ago. Ele disse, com que batismo vocês foram batizados? He said, with what baptism were you baptized? E eles disseram com o batismo de João. And he said the baptism of John. Então ele disse não, agora é o batismo de Jesus que é para arrependimento. So now he says now it's the baptism of Jesus for repentance. E ele disse aquela pessoa que não tem do que se arrepender, ele não tem por que batizar-se. And he says the person that has nothing to uh, repent, there's no need for them to baptize. O batismo de Jesus é para a pessoa que que é, esteve diante do tribunal de Deus chamado consciência. But uh, the baptism of Jesus is for someone who has come upon, uh, upon the tribunal of Jesus to repent. <laughs> Stay from the trial of God inside the man. Ou seja, diante do tribunal de Deus que está dentro de cada pessoa. You just said the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> A pessoa que está pronto para se batizar, o batismo de Jesus. The person who's ready to be baptized in the Jesus baptism. É a pessoa que esteve diante do, do tribunal de Deus chamado consciência e ele entendeu que em alguma coisa ele transgrediu as leis de Deus. It's someone who has found themselves within the tribunal of Jesus and não, consciously knows that they've sinned. Não é, não é sobre transgredir, transgredir alguma coisa da religião. It's not by uh, going against a religion. Mas a consciência dele disse que ele ofendeu a Deus em alguma coisa que fez ou que disse ou que pensou. But their conscience told them that they failed towards God by something they said, did, or even acted on. E essa pessoa, então, quer mudar de direção, quer mudar de vida, não quer mais cometer isso. E, então, ele tem que passar pelo batismo que Jesus ensinou que seja batizado. So now this person wants to change direction from where they were, and now they need to be baptized in order to do that. Paulo começa a ensinar isso em Efésios. So Paul starts to teach this in Ephesians. Em dois anos e meio. In two years and a half. Fifth. 50 mil pessoas ouviram o evangelho na Ásia. 50,000 people heard the Christianity in Asia. Isso tudo começou com dois discípulos. That started with two disciples. Quando Paulo escreve a carta de Efésios, que nós vamos entrar agora, So nela, when Paul writes the letter to Ephesians, ele está relembrando esses ensinamentos e esse evangelho que ele pregou em Efésios. He's remembering what he taught in Ephesians. E esse ponto da minha mensagem aqui agora, and this point in this message, ele começa a lembrar a igreja de Efésio, he, he starts to learn of the church of Ephesians, 
Qual era a condição deles diante de Deus? What was their condition to God? Como que Deus olhava para eles? How did God look at them? Tenha em mente a minha introdução. Have in mind my intro. Sobre o coco da África. About the coconut in Africa. Que ainda que seus pecados sejam vermelhos, that even though your sins can be red, ele, Deus os transformará em brancos como a neve. God will transform them white as snow. Ou naquela cultura da África, branco como a pepa do coco. Or in that culture in Africa, white as the inside of the coconut. Tenha em mente isto. Have that in mind. O que Paulo começa a mostrar para os Efésios so what God to show in Ephesians, era como era os pecados dele, como Deus olhava para a consciência daquele povo. It's how was their sins and how God looked at their consciousness of those people. Vamos ao versículo primeiro, a primeira so, coisa que ele lista. Let's go to verse one, the first thing that he uh, puts up on the list. E ele começa dizendo assim que nós estávamos he porque. He says that we were. Porque antes que o evangelho chegasse, esse evangelho que o pastor pregou aqui. Before the uh, before we met Christ, before it arrived, what he Pastor Chip just preached about. Como era a condição daquelas pessoas diante de Deus? What Veja was, bem. What was their condition upon God diante before? Diante de Deus. Ok? Ok. Porque é, a, é importante frisar. It's important to freeze. Que não é diante das pessoas que eu estou mencionando. Because it's not towards the people that I'm talking Porque about. Porque diante das pessoas alguém pode ser honrado. Because With people, someone can be honored. Importante. Important. Celebridade. Could be celebrated. Referência. Could become a reference. E muitos outros títulos. And many other titles. Mas o ponto importante é. But the important point como is. Que Deus nos vê. How does God see us? E Paulo começa a mostrar exatamente como Deus olhava para a humanidade antes de Jesus chegar. So then Paul starts to show to these people how God looked at humanity before Christ arrived. E no versículo primeiro ele diz que nós éramos pecadores. And in verse 1 it says that we were or like it says Essa you were era a nossa sinners. condição, pecadores. That was our condition. Por a mais sinner. que nós queremos parecer boas pessoas. As much as we try to look as good people. Por mais que nos esforçamos de querer impressionar as pessoas. As much as we put an effort to impress others. Com o que somos, com o que temos ou com o que fazemos. With who we are, with what we have and what we do. Diante de Deus nós não passamos de pecadores. Upon God we're no more than just sinners. E Paulo começa a mostrar para eles exatamente isto. And so God starts to show this to Paul. Antes que o evangelho chegasse em Efésio. Before the uh, Christianity arrived in Ephesians. Essa era a nossa a condição. Ele that diz. was their condition, our condition. Segundo ponto, ele diz Second que éramos is, influenciados por Satanás. We were influenced by Satan. Por que éramos influenciados por Satanás? Why were we influenced by Satan? Você olha para o, as situações que trazem dor, que trazem uh, uh, problemas aos seres humanos. If you look at situations that have brought pain or even struggles or suffering to, towards humans. E por um lado você olha o governo trabalhando e instituições e pessoas voluntários e outros uh, que tem o seu o seu o seu trabalho para tentar recuperar as pessoas, levantar as pessoas de novo. And you see the government have projects or even people volunteer to help structure people back up from struggles or even hard times. E você continua enxergando que os problemas na sociedade se prolifera, continua aumentando. But you still see that the problems get worse and worse on society. E você olha para o governo e ele desenha toda a classe de, de de programas sociais para ajudar as pessoas a viverem melhor. And you look at the government and they design this new idea of how to allow people to live better. E quanto mais uh, os governos, as, as instituições estão fazendo esse trabalho, and as much as the government or even institutions are doing these jobs or mais work, pessoas nós encontramos sofrendo pelos diferentes problemas que há na sociedade hoje. We find a, a lot of people suffering from a all types of problems in society today. Isso é porque Satanás existe, é real e está trabalhando em contra da família. That's because Satan exists, he is alive and he is working against 
your families, their é porque family. ele está trabalhando de alguma maneira para fazer com que a imagem e semelhança de Deus, você, é porque ele está trabalhando de uma maneira para fazer com que a imagem e semelhança de Deus, você, venha estar sofrendo, could suffer, passando dificuldades, going through struggles, coração apertado, heart and heart, a alma angustiada, soul just anxious and tired, confuso no seu espírito, nos seus pensamentos, confused in your thoughts and in your spirit, sem certeza do futuro, da eternidade, without knowing vezes. about the future or even eternity sometimes. É porque Satanás trabalha nisso. That's because Satan works towards that. Então Paulo estava dizendo que até antes que o evangelho chegasse, éramos influenciados por Satanás. So Paul says that even before Christianity arrived, we were influenced by Satan. Por isso você encontra na sociedade pessoas dizendo assim, eu era assim e assim, até que Jesus entrou na minha vida e mudou a minha história. That's Aleluia. why you hear people say that I was like this, like this, like this, but then Jesus arrived in my life and changed my story. Porque quando a pessoa recebe o evangelho, Because when someone receives Christ, ele tem a vida transformada. He has his life transformed. Ele tem a vida totalmente é, livre daquilo que foi antes para um novo agora. He has his life free from what he used to be to something new now. A terceira coisa que Paulo diz está no versículo 2, na terceira parte do versículo 2, e éramos controlados pelas concupiscências. And the third thing is that we were controlled by our corrupt corruption. Corruption, sorry. Creating words, don't do that. Isso é no versículo 2. It's on verse 2. E éramos controlados pelas concupiscências. And we were controlled by corruption. Não preciso entrar em detalhe, mas os desejos. I don't need to go into details, but the desires. E eu quero dar apenas um pequeno exemplo. And I want to give a small example. A vontade. Uh, the want. Porque o único que Deus espera de nós. Because the only thing that God expects from us. Depois de ter desenhado o plano da salvação. After designing the plan of salvation. O único que ele quer. The only thing he wants. É que nós aceitamos o plano da salvação. Is that we accept this plan of salvation. Também no livro de Isaías. Also in the book of Isaiah. No capítulo 1. In chapter 1. E a partir do versículo 18 e 19. And from verse 18 and 19. Tem um exemplo de como que é a humanidade. There's an example as to what humanity is. Deus disse a eles. God said to them. Vocês estavam no deserto. You, you, uh, you guys were in the desert. E vocês estavam com muita sede. And you guys were very thirsty. Estavam quase morrendo de you sede. You were almost dying of thirst. Então eu vim e me apresentei e disse. And so I came and I presented myself and I said, Eu sou a água da vida. I am the water of life. Deus fez assim. God did this. Veio até a humanidade. He came to humanity. E disse, vocês estão com sede. And he said, you guys are thirsty. E vão morrer de sede. And you will die of thirst. Mas eu tenho aqui para vocês But a água da vida. I have the water of life. Ou seja, você vem trazer para mim. Or being, I'll, I'll take ele, it to him. Ele é Deus. I'm God. Eu sou a humanidade. He is humanity. Que estou morrendo de sede. That is dying of thirst. E foi assim que Deus fez. And Capítulo this is what God did. Isaías. Chapter uh, one and Deus veio a eles. Isaías. God came to them. E trouxe a água da vida. And he brought the water of life. E disse isso aqui é água da vida. And he said this is the water of life. E a humanidade inteirinha olhou para Deus and e disse. And all of humanity looked at God and said. Não queremos. We don't want it. Nós vamos cavar a nossa própria fonte. We will dig our own well. Nós vamos cavar o nosso próprio poço. We will dig our own well. E não queremos a tua água da and vida. And we don't want your water of life. Foi assim que a humanidade fez, porque That... aqui está dizendo que nós éramos controlados pela concupiscência. O nosso desejo era o pecado e não a salvação. O nosso desejo era fazer a nossa própria vontade e não se submeter à vontade de Deus. Wow. That was long. <laughs> well, um, <laughs> say it again. <laughs> Nosso desejo era fazer a nossa própria vontade. Our desire was to do what we want to do. E a nossa, o nosso desejo não era se submeter à vontade de Deus. Our desire was not to give that to 
God or submit to ele, His desire. Ainda que ele ofereceu a salvação em Jesus, even if He offered salvation in Jesus, a humanidade me disse não. Eu, humanity said no. It's not for me. It's not for me. Então quando Paulo está dizendo aqui que nós vivíamos de controlados pelas concupiscências, so when, era when isso. Paul is saying that we were controlled by corruption. Ainda que Deus estava oferecendo para nós. Even though if God was offering it to us. Muitos de nós. Many of us. Não queríamos aceitar. We didn't want to accept it. A, a quarta coisa que Paulo está dizendo aos Efésios. And the fourth thing that he's saying to the que Ephesians. Nós estávamos debaixo da ira de Deus, versículo 2 também. A also in verse 2 is that we were underneath God's wrath. Yeah. yeah, this part here. Essa era a nossa situação. That was our situation. Estávamos debaixo da ira de Deus. We were under God's wrath. Não tem nada aqui, não tem. Paulo não está mencionando aqui que eles eram cidadãos romanos. Paul wasn't mentioning that they were citizens of the Roman Empire. Aqui não está mencionando as posições que eles ocupavam no Império Romano. He's not mentioning the positions that they had in the, the Roman Empire. Aqui não está mencionando o estilo de vida que eles podiam viver como romanos. He's not talking about the style of life that they could live as Romans. Mas Paulo está falando aqui como eles estavam diante de Deus. But he's talking about how they were upon God. E essa era a realidade. Nós estamos debaixo da ira de Deus. And that's the reality that we estávamos. all are were were under the wrath of God. Isso antes que o evangelho chegasse em Efésios. That's before Christianity arrived okay. to Ephesians. A quinta coisa. The fifth thing. Éramos pagões e sem Deus. We were pagans and without God. Essa era a nossa situação. That was our situation. Porque o fato de dizer eu tenho uma religião. Because the fact to say that I have a religion. Não significa de que essa religião. It doesn't mean that this religion. Seja o que Deus espera de nós. Is what God expects from us. Nós não estamos fazendo nada mais e nada menos. We're not doing uh, more or less. De dizer para Deus. Than to say to God. Eu vou cavar minha própria fonte. I will dig my own well. Eu não quero a tua água da vida. I don't want your water of life. A sexta ou sétima. Estávamos, estávamos separados de Cristo. Versículo de número 12. Uh, verse 12. We Estávamos were separados de Cristo. Or from Christ. Cristo é o Salvador. Christ was a Savior. Cristo, ele disse, eu sou a porta. Christ said that I am the door. Eu sou o caminho. I am the way. E a verdade. I am the truth. E a vida. And life. Enquanto a pessoa não aceita isto. And if you don't accept that. Enquanto a pessoa não toma a decisão de pertencer a isso until you take the decision or make the decision to be part of that cruzar essa porta que é Jesus cross the door which is Jesus submeter a sua vida ao que ele ensinou submit your life to what he taught nós estamos separados dele we are apart from him isso é o que a Bíblia diz that's what the Bible says separados de Cristo apart from Christ então cada coisa que ele vai detalhando para nós, so every little thing that he details to us, vai deixando muito claro que Deus estava de um lado, leaves it clear that God was in one side, e nesse caso Efésios, and in this case Ephesians, que representa toda a humanidade, that represents all of humanity, do outro lado, on the other side, separados de Deus, separate from God. A última coisa, and the last thing. E estávamos sem esperança no mundo, versículo 12. And we were dele. without hope in the world. E sem esperança no mundo. Essa era a nossa condição. That was our condition. A esperança aqui não é de um dia ganhar na loteria. Hope isn't that one day we'll win the lottery. Não é de um dia tornar-se milionário. It's not that one day we'll become millionaires. A esperança que não é de um dia encontrar uma linda moça e casar-se com ela. A hope isn't that one day we'll find a beautiful woman or man to marry. A esperança que não é de encontrar um jovem forte, trabalhador, bonito e simpático e se casar com ele. The expectation is not to find someone who's strong, hardworking, beautiful and to marry with that person. A esperança que Paulo está falando aqui é da eternidade. É what he's talking about is eternity. E a minha pergunta para você hoje é essa: aonde você vai passar a eternidade? My question is where will you go to eternity or how will you go to eternity? Então quando Paulo lista essas coisas, And so when Paul makes that list, ele está escrevendo aos Efésios. He's writing to the Ephesians. 
Mas dentro da dimensão do Espírito de Deus que ele está envolvido, But inside the dimension of the Spirit of God that he's involved in, ele está descrevendo a realidade de todo ser humano na face da Terra. He's writing the reality of all humans in the world. Os que foram antes dele, those who were before him, os que foram contemporâneos, contemporâneos dele, those who were with him, e os que ainda estão por nascer, and those who are still to be born. Esta é a mesma condição. This is the same condition. Sem esperança no mundo. Without hope in the world. Depois que Paulo conscientiza os Efésios disso, um, when Paul tells the Ephesians of all of this, ele começa a dizer então o que é que Deus fez para mudar essa situação. So then he starts to ask and tell them what did God do to change the situation. Lembram disso? Remember this? Ainda que seus pecados sejam vermelhos, even though if your sins are red, ele vai tornar branco como a pepa do coco. He will turn them white like the inside of a coconut. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Três coisas que Deus fez e aqui eu termino. Three things that God did and this is where I will finish. Ainda no capítulo 2 de Efésios, versículo 4 até o 6. Still on, on uh, chapter 2 of Ephesians verse a primeira coisa que ele fez, ele nos amou. First thing he did is he loved us. Amen. Amen. He great love for us. Primeira coisa que Deus fez, ainda apesar de que nós dissemos, nós não queremos a tua água da vida, nós vamos cavar o nosso próprio poço. The first thing he did, even though us saying that we don't want your water, we will dig our own well. Primeira coisa que ele fez, ele nos amou. The first thing he did is he loved us. Amen. Amen. E ele não nos amou de palavras. And he didn't love us with just words. Ele não nos amou de uma forma filosófica. He didn't love us in a form of philosophy. Ele não nos amou de uma maneira é, momentânea. He didn't love us in a, a love of just a moment. Ele nos amou como nunca nós havíamos sido amados. He's loved us in a way like we've never been loved. Ao ponto de tomar o seu próprio filho. In a way to just uh, take his own son. E enviar para a cruz do Calvário. And send him to the cross. Como um único sacrifício. As the only sacrifice. Aleluia. Por cada um de nós. For each one of us. O apóstolo Paulo chegou a dizer em um momento. Apostle Paul said in a moment. Por alguma pessoa boa. For a good person. Alguém pode se oferecer para morrer. Someone can offer themselves to die. Mas Deus prova o seu amor para conosco. But God proves his love for us. Em que Cristo morreu por nós. Where Christ died for us. Sendo nós ainda pecadores. Even though we were still yet sinners. E esse amor está aqui nesta manhã. And this love is here this morning. Esse amor está fluindo aqui nesta manhã. This love is flowing here this morning. Esse amor está fluindo aí onde você está assistindo pela internet. This love is flowing even where you're watching in the Apesar internet. Apesar de tudo que você tenha passado na tua vida. Although you've been through whatever you've been through in your life. Você ainda pode desfrutar esse amor. You can still enjoy this love. Ele está available for you. <laughs> Ele está disponível para você. A segunda coisa. The second thing. Versículo 5. E Verse ele nos libertou. Five. He freed us. Ele nos libertou. He freed us. E ele nos libertou. And he freed us. Amém? Amen. Quantos já viram aquelas algemas que antigamente se levavam preso assim? How many people have seen those shackles which back in the days they took people prison, as prisoners with? Assim nós estávamos preso pelo nosso pecado. This is how we were prisoners to our, our sin. Nós não podíamos fazer o que queríamos. We couldn't do what we wanted. Ele vai tentar dar minha água da vida que eu ilustrei novamente. I will, I will try to give him the water of life once again. Traz a água da vida para mim de novo. Oh. Isaías capítulo 1, né? Isaías chapter 1. I will bring him the water of life. Então eu tô com sede. So now he is thirsty. 
E Deus vem vindo ao meu encontro com a água da vida. And God is walking towards him with the water of life. E eu quero, só que quando eu chego perto, tem uma corrente do pecado que me segura para lá e eu não consigo alcançar. And I want it, but as I try to reach for it, my sin holds me back. Ainda que eu estou com sede. Even though if I'm thirsty. Ainda que Deus está ali com as mãos estendidas. Even though God has his hand extended out. Mas eu estou preso pelo meu pecado. But I'm still chained to my sin. Eu não tenho tempo para descrever pecados. I don't have time to describe sin. Mas já mencionei que existe uma consciência But I've mentioned that we have a conscience in us. Um tribunal de Deus dentro de cada um de nós. A tribunal of God inside of us. Que fala para nós qual é o nosso pecado. That tells us what our sin is. Que nos separa de Deus. That separates us. E nos mantém preso em nós mesmos. That keeps us caught in our own sin. Ainda que Deus esteja de braços Even though God has His arms open. Então a segunda coisa que ele fez ele nos libertou. And so the second thing he did is he freed us. Ele rompeu com a maldição do pecado. He broke those chains, broke the sin. E nós ficamos livres para correr para a cruz. And now we are free to run to the Corre cross. Corre para a cruz. Run to the cross. Jesus está de braços Jesus abertos esperando por nós na cruz. Jesus has his arms open. E agora ele nos ready libertou. And, waiting, and now he's freed us. Aleluia. Você pode levantar-se da tua situação e correr para a cruz. You may stand up from your situation and run to the cross. Em Jesus. And live a new life in Jesus Christ. E a terceira e última coisa que ele fez, versículo 6. And the third and last thing that he did, verse 6. Ele nos elevou. He elevated us. Ele nos elevou. He elevated us. Você não é mais a mesma pessoa. You are no longer the same person. O dia que eu preguei sobre Efésios aqui. The day that I preached about Ephesians here. Eu dei o exemplo que todas as pessoas estão no mesmo nível diante de Deus. I gave the example that everyone's in the same level with God. Quando recebemos a Cristo como Salvador. But when we receive Christ as a Savior. Ele nos levanta para cima para uma outra classe de vida. He raises us up to a different life. Quantos se lembram dessa pregação? How many of you remember that word? Ele nos levantou. He's elevated us. Você não é mais igual você era antes. You are no longer the same as you were before. Jesus Jesus vive dentro de você agora. God lives inside of you now. Você não tem mais lugar para viver como viveu em tempos passados. You don't have time or a place to live Deus how you used to live before. Deus levantou você a um novo e um novo estilo de vida. God has raised you up into a new style of life. Ele nos levantou. He's raised all of us. Hallelujah. Amen. Nos colocamos de pé. Ah, uh, you may stand. Eu vou encerrar aqui. I will end here. Ele nos amou. He loved us. Nos libertou. He freed us. E nos levantou. And also elevated us. Não queira voltar a viver o mesmo estilo de vida que um dia você viveu. Don't try to live the same style of life you used to live. Você é uma nova criatura agora. You're a new creature in Christ. Como que ele fez isso? How did he do this? Primeira. First. Através do seu favor especial, versículo 8. Verse 8, through his uh, unique favor. A segunda forma, através da fé. The second form, through faith. Isso está também no versículo de número That's also in verse 8. 8. E por último, And to finalize it. vamos celebrar agora. We will celebrate now. Capítulo 2 e o versículo 13. Chapter 2, verse 3. Através do seu sangue. Through his blood. Ele fez isso através do seu sangue. He did all of this through his blood. Amém. Amen. Aleluia. Amém. Essa era a nossa condição, igual que os dos Efésios. That was our condition, Mas just like fez, in Ephesians. Mas ele nos amou. But he's loved us. Ele nos libertou. He's freed us. Ele nos levantou. He's raised us up. Através da graça. Through his grace. Através da fé que você exerceu nele. Through the faith that you've exercised in him. E através do sangue vertido no Calvário. And through the blood that was poured at the cross. Amém? Amen. Nós vamos celebrar isso agora. We will celebrate this now. Não há nada em nós que pudesse convencer a Deus. There's nothing in, in us that could convince us of God. Mas mesmo assim Ele nos amou. But even so, uh, He's loved us. Você pode passar aqui you may come here, e tomar o teu. Nós vamos participar e celebrar. We'll celebrate. Porque a nossa condição era muito, muito triste diante Because de Deus. Because our condition was a sad condition towards God. A nossa situação era totalmente oposta ao que Deus esperava de nós como criatura. Our situation was completely opposite of what we were expected as creatures. Of God. Mas mesmo assim Ele nos amou. But even so, He still loved us. E nós vamos celebrar isso hoje. And so we will celebrate this today. Nós vamos expressar a nossa gratidão. We will expre express our gratitude. 
participando do, do símbolo do sangue partaking in the symbol which is blood, the blood e participando do símbolo do corpo de Cristo and partaking in what is the symbol of the body of Christ e com isso nós estaremos dizendo para Deus eu aceito a água da vida and with this we are saying that we accept the water of life eu aceito o plano de salvação que você desenhou we accept the plan of salvation that you have designed amém amen esse é o dia que nós temos para celebrar e nos alegrar. This is the day that we have to celebrate and remember. Porque a nossa condição estava debaixo de um juízo de Deus. Because our condition was under uh, the judgment of God. Mas ele traçou um plano de salvação. But he still wrote out a plan of salvation. Em que Cristo fosse ao calvário. Where Christ went to the Calvary. E ali derramasse até a última gota do seu sangue. There he poured out the last drip of his blood. Para que nós tivéssemos uma nova vida. So that we may have a new life. Essa nova vida está disponível para você. This new life is acceptable to everyone. Essa nova vida nós vamos celebrar nesta manhã. This new life we will celebrate this morning. Isso é o isso é o poder do evangelho. This is the power of Christianity. Mostrar aonde nós estávamos diante de Deus. To show where we were towards God e mostrar agora onde Deus nos colocou através do sacrifício do Calvário to show where now God has placed us to the sacrifice você agora é a família de Deus you are now a part of the family of God você é parte de tudo aquilo que Deus desenhou para a humanidade na terra you are part of everything that God has designed here in the world amém for you. amen e a Bíblia diz que naquele último dia And the Bible says that in the last day, na noite em que ele foi preso, in the night where he was taken as prisoner, ele reuniu-se com os doze, he got together with the twelve disciples, e disse eu desejei muito comer com vocês essa Páscoa, and he said I've desired so much to eat with you guys in this Easter, e ele tomou então o pão naquele momento, and he took the bread at that moment, e disse isso será o símbolo do meu corpo, and he said this will be the uh, the symbol of my body e ele quebrou aquele pão. and he broke that bread e começou a repartir com eles. and he started to share with everyone e a dizer eles, and he Façam said to them isso em memória de mim. do this in memory of me Poder participar dele you may take the bread e a Bíblia vai dizer para nós ali no livro de Lucas and the Bible will say in the book of Luke que depois dele ter repartido o pão That after that he parted the bread. E dito a eles que lembrasse dele ao, ao, ao viver aquele momento. And told them to, to, to uh, do that act as a remembrance of God or Christ. Ele tomou um copo. He took the cup. E ele disse o vinho que aqui está. And he said that the wine that is here se tornará o símbolo do sangue que eu vou derramar por vocês. Will turn into the symbol of blood that I will pour for you. Tomem ele e participem em memória de mim. Drink it and partake in remembrance of me. Isso aqui não é um snack. This here is not a snack. Isso aqui não é um ritual. This is not a ritual. Isso aqui não é uma regra de uma religião. This isn't a rule of religion. Isso é um mistério entre você e Deus. This is a mystery between you and God. E que você participa lembrando-se do que ele fez lá no calvário. Will you, part, por amor a você. will you partake in this remembering you yourself what God did in the cross for you Pode participar dele. you may partake hallelujah 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 Enquanto a irmã vai cantar ainda, while our sister will uh, sing você Aproveite esse momento para pensar aonde você estava. Take this moment to think where you were. Antes que o evangelho chegasse até você. Before Christianity ever reached you. E aonde Deus colocou você agora? And where God has placed you now. A esperança que hoje é viva no teu coração. The hope that is now alive in your heart. A certeza que você tem de que Deus está no controle da tua vida, abençoando e dirigindo em sucesso e em vitória a sua vida. The assurance that you have that God is now driving your life forward, Hallelujah. blessing you. Levante as tuas mãos ao céu e agradeça a Deus junto comigo. Raise your hands to the heaven and praise God. Obrigado, Senhor. Had left her dreams unstained. Salvação tão grande que tu nos deu. 
obrigado, Senhor, porque Tu nos trouxe de um lugar sem esperança a um lugar de esperança. O céu nos espera. A eternidade é nossa. Thank you, Jesus. Obrigado. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. teachers and um, you know as we were worshiping earlier at the beginning of the service um, you know I got this word right about God that God is a live wire right it's like a live wire stuff you know like the electricity right so you know you want you know things to work you want something to have life plug it in right you gotta get that power so as Christians right as as um as a believer in Jesus Christ God right We got to plug into him, right? He's always active, right? He's not a dead, um, you know, something that's dead, something that's not moving or can't, you know, react or anything like that, right? He's real, right? And he's alive. He's a live wire. So as a Christian, we got to plug into him, right? I'll give an example, right? I, I got an example as a phone, right? We all know we got to charge our phone, right? And, you know, no matter what we're doing on it, right? Uh, the battery is always draining, right? The battery is draining in the background. You know, if you don't turn off, you know, this, you know, um, what is a force stop the, the app, it'll drain, right? So even with us, right, we're just living our, you know, our daily you know, life. We're draining, right? We're always draining. Whatever we're doing, we're draining. So we got to plug into God. And, you know, an example of plugging in is to worship Him, right? plugging in that's the easiest way right music music is so easy right you don't have to like really do much you just turn it on whether you're in the car at home wherever right just plug it in even at work right you got your own little station if they allow that that's fine no matter what you do you just gotta plug into God right and then you feel recharged I don't know about you but you know I feel recharged whether you so whether we're worshiping God or reading the Bible right that's plugging in or praying that's plugging in And also um, ministry, you know, um, you know, whether it's helping Lavinia once a week or living waters or wherever, you know, something in God's name, in Jesus' name, you will feel, you know, more alive, right? You'll feel strengthened, you know what I mean? Because everything else at the end of the day, it will drain you. It will drain you, right? But only God can refresh you. God can give you that strength to, you know, to continue on and to be alive, Because God is you know, a live wire, right? He's like a live wire. So I just want to share the word and praise God. You know? Amen. Thank you for everyone this morning. I only just finished here. Uh, remember, in the back has a table, has a flyer uh, in Portuguese, Spanish, and English about uh, different things the church uh, gives for the community, okay? Uh, has their book for a new believer or maybe you have a friend or somebody else has their flyer for share the gospel for other people God bless you, go in peace and has a wonderful week in the name of Jesus Christ Amen
my lips shall still repeat the Jesus.